Hey, scrapbook friends, it's Nicole. And as I promised in my December 2022 new products video, I am here to do a tutorial on using the new Damask Flourish Frame Punch. So this is brand new this month, December, and it is a frame punch and they're my favorites. And it's been a while since we've had one and then it's been even longer since I've done a complete tutorial um, using one of these. So I've not done a lot of prep ahead. We're just gonna kind of play together, but I have a list of projects I wanna show you that you can do with this frame punch or with any of our frame punches. Um, I believe that the uh, geometric frame punch is still available. It might even be for sale on the December deals. If you don't have that one, that is absolutely a favorite, but I love this one. It is so, so elegant. So I'm gonna start by just talking a little bit about the frame punches. So like all of our border punches, it has these little wings on the side and those are to help you position your cuts. But you notice on a frame punch, it also has a silver line right here. That's gonna be your clue that it is designed to be a frame punch. So anytime you're cutting a frame, you wanna use that little silver line. You can also use it as a border punch, just like any of our border punches. It's got the black lines on the front showing you to where to position for a border. So let's start with that. Let's start with just a border punch and I'm going to be using papers from the new silver and gold tone on tone um, collection just because the tone on tones have a lot of mostly neutrals and I really love the colors on these. So I think they'll be great for, you know, holidays or celebrations, any of those kind of fun seasonal things. But let's start with a border. So all of our border punches, in order to cut a border, you're gonna put your paper in and line it up with either one of these black lines. And basically what that line shows you is where the edge of the punch is on the bottom. So you don't end up with kind of a partial punch. It just makes it a little bit more symmetrical. You can go in either direction. I tend to punch left to right. I'm, I am right-handed. I don't know if that makes a difference. So when you put your paper in, let's see, I'll do this one. When you put your paper in, you want to line up the edge that you're, you know, the starting edge with the black line right there, okay? And then you want to make sure that you hold, let's come a little closer. Okay, ooh, that was pretty sweet. Okay, you want to make sure that then you hold your punch up against this little back fence. That's kind of the secret is to make sure that you start on the right spot and then if you hold it here, you know you're gonna always be straight. So I'm right, right there on the line, I'm gonna punch and then you slide it over and this one's an easy one to line up. You just wanna make sure that when you line it up, you cover up all that blue, okay? So you see that blue? Actually, we see a tiny bit here in the middle because of the of the um, the silver line. But cover up the whole design in the blue. Punch again and keep going. And this is going to cut your border punch. Okay. And so because we started at the black line. Okay, now I'll go back if I can make this work. Okay, because we started at the black line, we started with a complete design and we ended with a complete design. These are made to have, so that the, um, the image is about two inches wide. So on a 12 inch piece of paper, you're gonna get that, um, you know, that symmetry. And this is attached. I think all of the frame punches are attached. So if you wanted to use this on your layout as a border, you would need to trim that off, okay? and then that lets you trim it at any size you want. This one that I used in my other um, sample, you see I left a longer border. So if you wanted to do something else along here, um, you, would, you would leave a longer border. If you wanted to put pictures, use this as a photo mat, or you could even just do the top of your page and do your whole page. So that's our regular standard border. And then, hmm, I think I'm gonna go ahead and show you the frame because those are kind of the two basic techniques we're going to be using are the border and the frame and then we'll mix it up and do some fun things so let's get another paper out of here i think i'm going to try this 
yellow one because I like the yellow and we're gonna do a frame now you can do a frame on any size paper that is in even number um, as long as it's more than four inches so I'm gonna show you in a couple of different sizes but we're gonna start with the 12 inch border and last time we started on the black line but this time we're gonna start on that silver line remember I told you the um, the frame punches have that silver line on the side that our regular border punches do not have. However, I have tried this on a couple of punches that don't have that silver line and it's worked okay to, um, to come around. Okay, my camera let me zoom in quite a bit or not very far and there's nothing in, in between. So there's the silver line. You see I'm lining it up, punch, and then it's the same process. You notice I'm holding it with my thumb against the back fence, I'm covering up the blue. But this time, instead of cutting six across, I'm only going to get five because I've left these little pieces on the edge. And that's what we want to do. All right, so this time when I cut the last piece, you see as I line up this side, it also aligns my edge with the silver line. And I still, I can't really grip, grip it very well, but I still wanna make sure that I'm pressing it up as best I can. And that's gonna ensure that I've cut straight when I'm cutting my uh, border, okay? So now I'm gonna turn it and do the same thing with that little edge piece. That's gonna go on the silver line. And this is what makes that curve. So you end up with a little square extra. We're just gonna go all the way around, do the same thing with five on a side, leaving the square and then turning and um, punching around the corner. Okay. Sometimes that little square piece won't quite just jump out as quickly as you might like. If, it, if it's attached by just a little tiny corner, I just snip it off with scissors. It, you, you don't even notice it. And you can easily clean up the corners so that it punches or it looks pretty. All right, there we go. Line up the blue. And so then my last section, I've got the, the little corners on both sides. So I just wanna make sure that I don't accidentally forget and keep punching off the edge because I want to stop at the silver line. So one, two, three, four, and last one is going to be five. So this one is lining up here, that one's lining up with the silver line. And Sorry, that's a new thing I just found on my phone that I can zoom in and out re really easily. So this is the frame based, uh, starting with a 12 inch paper. So let's try this and see if you get a kind of an idea of how you would, it, this would look if you were to put this just on your scrapbook layout like that. Isn't that pretty? And of course, if you are um, doing a double page spread, you don't have to punch this last side. I would go ahead and punch off the edge and get a half piece here and go all the way around. Maybe I'll do that at some point, but probably not today because I won't remember. Okay, so that is a 12 inch frame. Those are the two kind of basic basic pieces that um, you might want to use with this frame punch. So let's go and do a smaller frame. Okay, so I'm gonna do an eight by eight frame here. You can do a um, any increment that is an even number. And I like the look of the squares, especially on this one. We, I will also do a um, like a six by eight that you, could, you might wanna use as a rectangular frame, but be sure when you're cutting a frame that you use the frame line and not the border line, okay? So let's start with the eight by eight piece and I'm going to cut the frame. So this time it only goes around three times. And we're gonna turn, do the same thing we just did.
And I probably should speed this up in the video so it makes it not as not as long for you, but it does weird things. It makes weird sounds when I try to speed it up. So just bear with me. It not it doesn't take very long at all. It'll just I would only save maybe 10 seconds from the video. So and I'm noticing that right here it's not exactly lining up, so I'm a little curious to see what's gonna happen. I don't know if I trimmed my paper a little bit short. I'm a little curious to see what's gonna happen when we get to that last edge. It's probably going to be fine. And I don't know how I managed to cut my paper too small. Well, I got a tiny bit of a little hiccup on the edge, I'll show you. But nobody's gonna notice it. Probably not even me. So right here, there is just a little bit of a notch cut out that this other side doesn't have. But, you know, this is scrapbooking, not, you know, rocket science. So there's the, there's the smaller piece. Let's see, I'll do the back of this and see if we can get. So there is the 12 inch piece and then this is the eight inch piece. So the next size we could do is a four inch piece. Let's see what I've got over here. I think this is a four inch piece. Let me cut it at four. And four is the smallest size that you can do. It looks like I didn't cut that one straight. Huh. There we go. There's a four inch piece. And we will do the same thing. And then I am gonna move those pieces. But when you cut with the four inch, we'll zoom in again for this one. It's super easy because your piece is four inches and the line, the space between these two lines is four inches. So you just line up both pieces with both silver lines, press it up against the fence and then turn. last piece. So that's actually turning out really pretty, this little kind of medallion shape. I think this would be cute, um, a, like a row of these along uh, along uh, the border of your scrapbook layout. You know, you could put this on a piece of, of contrasting cardstock. You could either do it like this, you know, three of these down here. Um, you could put some kind of a circle. You could you know, put a picture even in there. I think that could be pretty. So that's the smallest piece that you can do. Um, I know in the past we've done where you cut two and kind of overlap them to make a circle look. All right, I'm gonna do it. I told you guys I was just playing, right? We knew that going in that I was just gonna be playing today here on this video. So this one is, this must be the piece I didn't cut straight because it's looking like it's a smidge bigger than four inches. Okay, so that was that little extra piece somehow I measured wrong last time. I'm just gonna real quick do this, another four inch square and just see what it looks like if you do two of them and offset them. So I love when I have time to just sit and play with a new tool. The, the the creative juices kind of get flowing once you just have time to experiment. And some of the experiments might not work, so you guys may get to watch some of that not working. But, all right, so I don't have another piece that's yellow, so maybe that's not gonna work, but um, yeah. Maybe if I'd done those in the same color, it would look better, but it does kind of give you uh, more of a round look. I guess I shouldn't have zoomed back out so much. Kind of more of a round look. I think if those were both in the same color, that could look kind of cool. So that's two four inch squares cut and offset with each other. All right, now we're gonna take a minute to empty my trash. And I know that I've told you guys before that I like to put a, um, something underneath, punch on a piece of scrap paper, and yet here I am not doing it. So do as I say, not as I do. Okay, so those are those are the regular frame pieces, but I wanna go back to the borders because there are so many fun things that you can do and I want to be able to explain to you how I figure out what I'm going to do. And I have done borders like this before. You guys have seen me do them before. Um, and usually by the time I get to doing the video, I've measured, I've figured out all the math for you. 
but this time I didn't. I haven't really um, done any math. We're going to do math together. And I know we don't love math, right? But we're going to do math together. We're going to start with a double, a mirrored border, what I like to call a mirrored border. And I know I said that when you start with a border, you should use this black line. But when I try to mirror, sometimes you can't see the edge when you line it up again with the black line when you reverse it. So when I do a mirrored border, I like to start with the edge of my, um, the edge of my punch. Okay. So instead of using the black line, I'm going to line my paper up right here with the edge of the punch. And I just use my hand to feel because it's kind of hard to tell, especially with this light paper, but I just want to line up exactly so that, you know, I feel where to stop it. I put my finger here, my finger stops it. And then it's the same process where I'm going to punch the border and it's going to be six. So I'm going to go all the way off the edge. But this little piece that I've left on the end is going to be the magic to help me do the math. All right, so before I punch that other section, usually, you know, I would go back and punch this other section. But this time I'm not going to because I want to measure with it. So I'm gonna take my trimmer. Let's see, I think this side might be easier for you to see on the trimmer. And I want to have my border. This is the one that I did in my, um, in my new products video. And this one I used three and a quarter inches. And it's a little bit wide. I think I might want to do three and an eighth. But how I would figure that is to look here where the farthest inside piece of the border is, which for this one is right here, this little valley. And so a lot of times what I'll do, I'm going to zoom back down. Hope that's not driving you guys nuts, the zooming in and out. Like I said, new trick. So I'm going to come down here and find this little edge end piece. All right, you see that little end piece? And then I'm going to put it all the way to the edge of the gray mat. So the cutting line is right here. It's the line closest to the logo. That's the that's where the blade of the 12 inch trimmer actually cuts. And so from that cutting line to the front part of the mat is about eighth of an, an eighth of an inch. And I feel like that's the dimension or the width of this piece of the design. Come on. Sorry, not wanting to focus. All right. All right, so that's about the width of that piece of the design. So that's kind of what I want. And so if I move this from the cutting line to the edge, that gets me right here at about three, oh no, one and one and five eighths. So you know what, that's the number that I had before, one and five eighths is what it gets. So I wanna double that. That's what I did last time, I got three and a quarter, but then that's gonna double this. So we're gonna to go to three and one eighth right here three and one eighth. Sorry, I told you math. Um, I'm going to cut this at three and one eighth. And then I'm going to zoom back out. And tell me in the comments if that's annoying, if the zooming in and out is more trouble than it's worth. But now because I did not punch this end, I'm not going to punch it on this side yet either. I'm going to do the exact same thing, but I'm going to flip it over Put that same side in here, same side up against my finger to, um, to make sure that I'm centered. And then I'm going to punch this way. And just having that um, little piece at the end to help me do the measuring, I feel, is, is really helpful. I have tried doing it by using the, um, using the black line on the front, but just... As you can see with this one, as once it goes in, it would be very difficult for me to see the, if I did it like right here, it would be hard for me to see where that black line exactly is. So that's why I like to start with the edge when I'm cutting um, uh, one of these mirrored borders. All right. Okay, so that looks pretty good to me, pretty even. Oh, it looks nice with the stripe even. Um, and then I will do the last piece down here. Let's see, that's gotta go that way. So 
So now that I've got it all lined up, then it's not that hard to trim that last piece off. All right, so that gives me this mirrored, this mirrored border. So this one was at three and a quarter. You can see that spacing between here was at three and a quarter, and this one was at three and one eighth. And I kind of like it with a little bit narrower. I wonder if I could even do it at like three and one sixteenth, but then we're getting into real measurement -y stuff. So I like this. I think this would be really fun with like, maybe this way even with a, a thin border of something. I don't know, lots of fun things you can do with this border, but this one is so elegant. You could also layer it with one you've already cut, you know, something like this. But the next thing we're gonna do is talk about how to do an offset border. And I love this look. This is pretty much the same kind of thing, except, um, we're going to use both the frame and the um, and the border punch lines. So this one, it doesn't matter because we're only going to cut one side. I like to start with the border side. I'm going to punch down. And because I am not going to be centering these on each other, I can cut it a little bit thinner, I think, to start. So I probably ought to leave that end piece whole and use it to measure with, but I'm not going to. Okay. So I want to, I want to have the, um, okay, that's better. I think Is that one easier for you to see. I want to have kind of this snaky piece on the inside. And I think I did this one at three inches when I, when I punched it, but that's even wider than I need it to be. So let's see where this piece comes into. Again, I'm using the cut to measure. If I put that right on the cut line, that's at one and a half inches. But I can bring my little cut line piece into here, I think right about there, and that's at one and a quarter. So I'm actually gonna turn this, one and a quarter times two is two and a half, Again, this is an experiment, so this may not work, but I'm gonna punch, cut this at two and a half and cross my fingers that it works, okay? So I like to punch first and then measure. I know different people have different um, preferences, but the first one we cut as a border and this one we're gonna cut as a frame, which means we're gonna have half a design right here. So I'm gonna punch right here. Oh yeah. That's looking nice. I probably could have gone maybe a two and added an eighth because it's really, really close here on the edge. But how elegant does that look? Can you guys see it from there? I don't know if you can. I'll go ahead and punch off the edge. So this one was at two and a half. That, that looks like a laser die cut. It completely looks like it, it came that way. Look how close we came on that one. This was at two and a half. So you punch the border side, then trim it to two and a half. And you probably could do one little tick mark bigger than two and a half, which would be two and, oh, nine sixteenths, I guess, two and nine sixteenths, whatever this one little tick mark right here is, you could punch it there. If you cut it there, if you wanted this little middle section to be just a little bit wider and fit the design better. But I think that looks pretty awesome with the offset border. Okay, so another thing that you can do with this same technique is we can do an interlocking border, which is Basically, if you cut two separate pieces, instead of having the border on one side and the frame on the other side, you would cut two pieces and do it like this so that they interlock. All right, does that make sense? So I'm gonna cut them out of the same color, I think. I'll use the same, the same piece that we have. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna punch one that is a border. And you can see that once you get the hang of this, it's it's quite speedy. 
it doesn't take a whole lot of time. All right, so there was my one that is a border because I started at the black line. And I could trim it now and cut the next piece, but just to be quick, I'm going to flip around, use the other side. And you wouldn't have to even use the same paper. You could use two different papers if you like. But the other side, I'm going to cut as on using the frame markings, but I am going to cut off the edge so that I end up with the little half pieces again. And of course, you could do this with solid cardstock. I just had the silver and gold tone on tone handy. Thought it would be fun to play with it. I haven't really had a chance to, to do much with it yet. All right, so now I've got this side that's cut with the frame markings and one side that's cut with the border markings. And I'm gonna cut these the same thickness off from the, um, the this inside edge. And again, I'm going to put this right on that line and then bump it out a little bit. And I'm just at, I think I'm gonna to go to, to, I think I'm gonna go all the way to one and three quarters, which is the farthest line you can get on this side. And you know, I always like, whenever I'm cutting something narrow, I always like to use this side to measure so that I have this whole top section to keep my paper straight. And actually a tip I heard recently was anytime you're trying to cut super straight, you should cut in the direction that you're holding your paper. So sometimes, you know, you can, you can balance your paper along this bottom edge and then you could pull forward. But rather than cutting, you know, I've got it here uh, up against the top. And so when I pull down, there is a chance I could nudge it away. So if I, pu if I push forward, then that pushes my paper up to this little bumper. I, I just recently learned that tip. I, am not, I have not yet implemented it in my scrapbooking life, but I have heard that tip. Okay, so here we go. This is the border side and this is the frame side. And look how those make this kind of interlocking border. I think that looks very pretty to have that interlocking border, just very elaborate. You could also do this like in the middle of your page. Um, you know, you could, I don't even know if you could, you'd have to punch on both sides and then trim um, and then have maybe, you know, four inches over here and eight inches over here, or, you know, it'd be less than that, but, you know, put this on your page and kind of make it an in-between, an in-between border. I may have to try that. Um, yeah, let me try that real quick. I will, I will punch off camera and, um, and then I'll come back and, and put it together so you don't have to watch me punch again. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, so I've just punched this the same as I did these last two pieces where I punched one as the border and one as the frame side. But instead of trimming them based on how thick this is going to be, I started with a 12 inch piece of paper. So I, you don't end up with 12 inches. Let's see what we've got left here. Um, well, you got almost 12 inches. Wow, that's actually really close to 12 inches. So whenever I, do something like this. I want to be able to leave enough space so that um, I can put a picture on it. So I think I want, hmm, I think I'm going to do this at five inches right here. Got my trimmer. Oh, easier to see this side. Sorry. Put. I'm going to do this at five inches. So one side is five. So I could put like a four inch picture here. So I've got my picture at five, uh, my paper at five inches. So now this is five and this is seven. And then if I were to put this on a background page, I could have, ooh, I could do it both ways like this. I could have this where these two kind of line up right here. I guess you have to leave a little bit of a border edge you could do it like that. You could leave a bigger gap. That looks kind of cool. And you'd have enough room for some pictures here. Or um, you could do it like this with the two different ones because it's symmetrical. That looks kind of cool too, doesn't it? 
looks like it doesn't quite go, like it doesn't fill the whole 12 inch paper because of the pieces that we did cut off. But I like that. I think that looks cool. I think I like it better this way. And because I cut the papers at the same time, um, even though this pattern is directional, I feel like it goes this way it still kind of works. And maybe I don't like the five inches. Maybe I wish this was narrower and went like that. But anyway, like I said, we're playing around. And so this is, this is kind of a, a negative space border, I guess, compared to, compared to this one, which is the offset border. And of course you could do this the same if you put, you know, you could also cut punch both sides the same and have your border, you know, your interior border look like that. And then you've got these little triangles to put stuff in. Okay, we're not done, but I'm running out of time. I know that um, the experts say I'm not supposed to let my videos go longer than 30 minutes, but I've got so much to show you. Okay, almost done. I just want to talk about a couple more kind of more advanced scrapbooking techniques or punching techniques. And one of them is punching around a circle. So you can use the, um, the jumbo circle for this, but I'm going to use the circle cutter. And if you have not yet watched my video about the circle cutter post-it note hack, you're gonna wanna watch that to, to figure out how I'm gonna cut my circle so that I can do a couple of other things with it. And I'm going to go ahead and cut a pretty big circle because this design leaves a, leaves a pretty big, um, it's a pretty deep design. And so if I cut my circle too small, I'm gonna end up with a tiny circle. So I've already gone ahead and put my post-it note. It's exactly centered on my paper and I'm gonna cut like this 11, oh, I don't know if I'm brave enough for that, about 11 and a half inch circle. So I put it halfway between the 11 point, um, you know, the, it's, it's in tenths of an inch. So two, four, six, eight. I put it halfway between the four and the six. And then I'm gonna line up my cutter Here. I will link to the circle hack in the comments if you haven't seen this to figure out how to do it. Because I always like to, if I can cut in the middle when I'm cutting a big circle like this, I always feel like there's maybe something I can do with this piece for something else. So I'm not great at saving my scraps, but um, you know, you never know. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to leave this on here. I'm going to turn it over so it doesn't distract us, but um, I'm going to leave this on here in case I want to cut out the middle. And that way I'll know exactly it'll be the exact middle. And then you're going to turn your punch over and we're going to look at where the punch ends. So this one, the punch ends kind of right here, this little valley. And so when I put my paper in, I want to make sure that the fattest part of the circle is at that little point. Very handy. And then you're going to match up the valleys. So that's what we're going to do. Touching at the point, match up the valleys. It does like to stick when you punch around a circle for some reason. All right, this is a very delicate design, so. Um, all right, I can kind of see, see that right there? Kind of see that little edge. Sorry, I gotta, I'll pull, the, I'll scoot this down again. All right, maybe we can, maybe we can both see at the same time. So I've got the point right here. Uh oh, now it doesn't want to focus. Got the point right here, and then I, I can just see the little edge right in there. Okay, apparently that's the best I can do when I've got it zoomed in close. All right, that looks all right. That matched pretty well right there. So I'm just going to keep going around, punching around the circle, lining up the corner and the point. Now, this is the one that I never know if it's going to be how it's going to line up at the end. Um, you can measure it and do stuff. Megan Jacks is really great in her videos about measuring and calculating and, and, you know, you punch on one side and punch on the other side and, you know, she can make it all work magically. And that's just not my gift. I'm not, I know I made us do math, but I, I'm just not into measuring. I'm into the, whatever the, whatever's the fastest way. So just remember anytime you have a, um, 
a place where maybe it doesn't line up just perfectly. That's what embellishments are for. You can put an embellishment in there. So, it is a little tedious. I certainly wouldn't recommend doing this on every layout. I mean, unless you like have lots of time and don't mind spending it on a, a special layout, you know, you could do this, but for this one, just going around. Okay, maybe I will speed this next little section up for you. Okay, now I'm to this last little piece. I'm not sure if it's gonna be exact. It's just over two inches. And we know we talked about how the, um, the space is two inches. Let's try it and see. I might end up with some little pie-shaped wedges, but it might be okay. So can I see the edge on both sides? I kind of cannot see it on both sides. I'm just going to line up with the first one like I've always done. All right, so I do get this little pie-shaped wedge, but I'm just going to take my scissors, and I'm, this has a little bit of curve. I'm just going to follow the curve. I'm sorry. And off it goes. And I do not think that anybody is going to be able to tell that that's the... Um, that's the piece that, you know, where I had to match it. Okay, let's find the black paper again. I think that shows up nice on the black. All right. Uh, yeah, okay, there it is. But you can barely tell, right, that one of them I had to, I had to fiddle around with. So I'd probably put that one kind of down, down at the bottom where it wouldn't be as noticeable, but I don't think anybody's going to notice that. Now, because we left our post-it note on the back, if you wanted to, you could certainly leave this as a big circle, like a doily type thing. Advantage to using the mat is now I have a place to dump my scraps easily into the trash. But I'm going to go ahead and show you what one of the benefits to using the post-it note hack is now, is that because this post-it note is still on here, I haven't moved it, this is still the exact center. So let's see, I'm gonna measure again between the shortest part of the cuts. From there to there, it looks like it's six, eight and a half inches. So if I were to cut an eight inch circle in here, I think that would be very pretty. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my cutter down to eight. And we are going to try this. All right, and voila. Doesn't that look pretty? I really, really like that. That would be so nice to um, spotlight a, a heritage photo or um, some kind of a special photo for a title page. I just think this looks great to punch around the circle and then cut the inside out. And then I could um, actually punch around this again and have two layers. Actually, I will. I will, again, I'll do that off camera um and then i'll and then i'll come back all right i'm gonna i'm gonna punch it down so i have another another layer okay don't go anywhere okay so i went ahead and i cut this inside circle if i remember it was eight inch circle i did mess it up a little bit when i was got to the end piece i was trying to like center it in the middle and i didn't realize that i didn't punch all the way to the little point so the point got a little bit wonky, but remember we talked about covering it up with an embellishment. That would be a great place for an embellishment. And then I cut the inside circle was four, about four and three quarters. It was between the 4.6 and the 4.8. Um, and then I got a five point piece that worked out pretty well. So if you wanna do this like as a five point star, instead of this four that we did with the rectangle, 
I kind of like the look of that with the five point. And I think even on, even if I did it like this, probably nobody's going to notice this one little hiccupy spot, but also, you know, put a picture, put a sticker, put a flower, put something on that. But I think that looks really, really pretty, really fun, really elegant. Um, you know, this, this is maybe a bit much, and I don't know that I would use this here, but I mean, even if you put two of these like on a layout together or something like that. So that's the punching around a circle technique. And I only have like two more that I want to talk about. Um, and one of them is one I haven't really done before, but I think would look really pretty with this paper or this technique. And that is to use your border punch to cut your paper on the diagonal. You only want to do this with designer weight paper. You do not want to do it with our cardstock because you can mess up your punch. But this is a great way to have an angle cut on your um, layout. Now, whenever I do it, uh, fold my paper in half, I like to pinch, just kind of pinch the corner right there so I know that I'm starting with a sharp edge at the corner. And then I'll pinch this other corner just with my thumbnail right at the middle, pinch the corner. And so then I can match this other corner and line up the sides, go to that pinched edge. This part is a little, a little tedious and probably doesn't exactly matter because I'm just going to trim it off, right? So, okay. So now we're going to use this to punch our whole, um, punch the whole center of our paper two thicknesses off. And it doesn't really matter where you start because um, it's just gonna go off the edge. So I think I want to start at the, I'll start at the edge, because that's easy for me. I'm gonna start at that, the edge, again, not with a black line, but the edge of the wing. I think it's when I go the other way, it's gonna just cut off the, almost that whole piece. Again, play with this. This is a good thing to do. If you've got, you know, did you ever have a paper pack and there's a couple of papers you just don't like? Um, I like to use those to experiment. I don't usually use a brand new paper pack like I'm using today, but I wanted to try something different by doing that. All right, so I punched off the edge there. I kind of wish I would have found the center and started in the center, but maybe next time I'll remember to do that. Oh, get that piece out. All right, so there's my corner piece. And so I think this, if you wanted to do this on your layout, you could have, um, you know, I think across two, um, like a double page layout, that could be nice, maybe just on one. But then you got the first one and then you could take another piece and use this as an uh, it doesn't quite fit, does it? Okay, maybe not. But you could put, use the diagonal piece again to cut uh, another little border, but you could just do it right there. How about that? We'll do it like that or like this. Oh, if I do it like that, that might work. Anyway, so, you know, you could have that across a corner. I think that looks very pretty. I would not probably put these together on one layout. I think that's a little bit much, although, you know, maybe not. Maybe it's all right. You, we did kind of lose a bit of the center. And I don't like that it's not quite offset. It, you know, it's kind of it's kind of too symmetrical in this one corner didn't work right because I didn't start in the middle. I should have started in the middle, but uh, definitely across to, across a double page layout or just as a single on one single page layout. And then of course the other thing you could do is you wouldn't even need to to do it across the whole layout. Um let's see. I don't know how to figure out how I want to do this one. I guess you could just cut. You could just even cut your cut your piece off. Let's cut a corner piece off of this. I'm gonna use my 45 degree angle line right here. And I'm gonna put this, the point at the four inch line. All right, and I'm just gonna cut this off. And this time I am going to find the center. I think I I think I'll be happier if I do that. Let's find the center. Um, I think I'm going to even use a pencil. All right, I don't have a pencil. I'm going to use a pen because I'm going to cut it off so it doesn't really matter. 
So this is a zero centering ruler, makes it a smidge harder to find. There, that's the center. Um, I'm sorry, I just got to measure the old fashioned way. So this is eight inches. So the center is at four inches, which is right here. One, two, three, four, five, So that's the center right here. But then I know that I want um, th th that on the punch right here, this is, I think this is two inches. Let me double check. Yeah, so that's two inches. That's two inches. So I can, hmm. I, I really want this to be the middle. Which is right about there. Oh, how am I going to get it exact? That is a problem. Just because of the way this guy looks, I want this to be in the middle, which means that I'm using my grid, so it's an inch. It's an inch from the black line to the, the outside line, or the frame line. So that means it's two inches from here to the frame line two inches, two inches. So if I want this to be the point, I want this to go. All right, I'm going to put the pointy piece. Sorry, this is again, me experimenting. I'm going to put the pointy piece right here on the frame line. All right, hopefully that's going to work. And then I'll just punch off the edge like normal. All right, thanks you guys for kind of sticking with me as I um, am just experimenting. This is not something I've done a lot with the triangle edge. Okay, now I like that. There it gives us just that triangle edge. So you could do that with, you know, something like this if you wanted two triangle lines. That looks kind of cool. Um, you could go back and punch something here. I would figure out what the center is and put that on the, the space line. I'm not going to make you guys watch me do that now. This, this video already lasted way longer than I planned. But um, I hope that it has shown you how many things you can do. I didn't even show you how to do an inside border. Go back and look at my geometric frame punch video for the inside border. Um, or I could do that another time. But so many things that you can do with this with these frame punches, all the frame punches, a lot of these you can do with our regular border punches. The border punches are a little bit more flexible than the border maker because um, you don't have the edge piece. So when you use the border maker, you got this kind of the sides right here. It's just a little harder to use. I kind of, I find that the frame punches and the border punches just make it a little bit more, um, a little easier to do some of these fun techniques. So we have cutting your whole paper out across at a corner. We have um, measuring and cutting off a corner. We have the circle, punching around a circle. We have the regular frame punch, an eight by eight frame. I didn't do a six by eight frame, sorry guys. Um, we have a regular border we have an offset border so that you can do it as a um, interlocking border. We, this is the offset border where you do the two sides separately and then the regular border and then the page that we did. This is an experiment on the fly where I did the, the two pieces that interlock and now I've lost one of the pieces, but it's somewhere in here on my chaos. Oh, here it is. So these two together that, that interlock and then just your regular border and your regular mirrored border. So that's like 20 different things that you can do. That's not maybe 20, I didn't count, but so many things that you can do with these border punches. It does not have to be the damask flourish punch. You can do this with your geometric frame, your arch frame. Um, you can do a lot of them with the mandala burst, which was not a frame punch, but if you find that middle piece, you can kind of treat it like a frame and it works kind of similarly. It doesn't really work so much as a frame, but as far as the halfway and the offset. So. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, if the video was too long, I, I totally get that. Thank you for watching to the end. 
would you rather have me like do a bunch of separate videos about like five you know, five videos about three more things you can do with the damask punch, or do you like having it all together? I feel like it's easier for me um, when I want to send someone ideas. I can say, here's a, a link to all the ideas. But you tell me what you would rather see. I know, you know, these 45-minute videos are probably not it, but maybe they are. I don't mind watching a 45-minute video when it's full of lots of ideas. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your support. I appreciate your kind comments. And of course, uh, if you do not have a CM advisor of your own, I am always very thankful when you choose to order on my website. So thanks very much and happy scrapbooking.